Hi, and welcome to my own devices. I'm out here on the front lines seeking value and synergy in modern and vintage audio gear. If you dig what I do, please like this video and hit the subscribe button so you don't miss the next one. In this video, my goal is to shoot all of the footage in one evening after work. And if it's not as polished as my previous videos, that is why. Now, polished is a relative term, I know, compared to other people. Anyway, in a previous video, I presented a tour of the nine turntables that I had accumulated over the previous months. And I will post a link to that video below. Well, several individuals suggested I sell some of those of those, some of those nine turntables and buy something a bit next level. A few months ago, I was in, at my friend Jim's place, the guy who fixes my stuff. He's an electronic, electronics technician. And in the shop was a guy, uh, an older guy, who we started talking about audio gear and he said oh I have a turntable in the van in my van that I'd like to sell so I said oh yeah let me check it out so in the van was this micro Seiki turntable and I said whoa all right I wasn't expecting that I've never owned a micro Seiki turntable and I got a little excited it had a couple of things wrong with it uh, one of the first things was that the original hinges were missing and the guy had I, I already removed them I threw them out but he attached these horrible like hinges on the back that you would attach maybe to a to a door uh, to a cabinet or something or a lid to a box they were they were horrible and he had to drill extra holes so I don't have the hinges and the other thing that was wrong with it is that it had a really weird really long weird cable that had female connectors on it then you had to get these male connectors to plug into them so one of the first things I did was upgrade the cables to these halfway decent um, uh, cables so that's good the micro Seki MB 14 is an entry-level model from around 1980 and it sold for $140 it's belt drive semi-automatic perhaps not the most exciting turntable at first glance but it's very solid and well-engineered turntable and I believe it's worth a couple hundred dollars but you know when I put it up for sale we'll see what happens not long ago, I saw a listing for an Onkyo direct drive turntable, and the ad was only up for a couple of hours, so I acted quickly, and I made an offer about 20% below asking price, and it was promptly accepted. As I often encounter, this unit belonged to the father of the seller. And the father had passed away a few months before, and the, the seller had very little knowledge or interest in turntables. And, you know, it was pretty filthy, and, but I believed it would clean up well. When I got it home, I soon discovered that this fully automatic turntable only worked in a fully manual state. None of the automatic features functioned. And after a bit of research and talking to a fellow vintage audio guy, the issue is a disintegrated main cog. Luckily, there are a few sellers on eBay who sell 3D printed replacements, which is really cool. The original cog was so soft and it was turning into goo when I opened it up. And I easily removed it and cleaned up all the residue and lubed up the spindle and replacement was a perfect fit. Like a lot of 1980s turntables, it has controls on the front that allows you to work it with the cover down, which I never do. It has motorized cueing and tone arm lateral movement they call search. This model is part of the Integra line of OnQ. That was, a, that was higher level stuff. And this was one of their higher end models at the time it's pretty substantial weight wise and as I said earlier it's direct drive that's direct drive quartz locked so the speed is rock solid so it also has a sprung suspended arm and platter which you don't often see with direct drive models in a previous video I described how I acquired this Lin Sondek LP12 it's it's a very nice high quality British turntable and this model is from 1988 so it's obviously not up to the latest spec. And if, and if you're not that familiar with the legendary LP12, Lynn has been making this model continuously since 1973. And if you want to put in the money and effort, you can upgrade any vintage unit to the latest 
2021 specs. The funny thing is, if I did that to this model, there would be no original parts left of the 1988 unit. So that's not really a great idea, but the more sensible thing to do is to upgrade it in a more gradual manner. After I bought it, I started checking out numerous LP12 forums, groups, videos, and articles. And I read that the platter bearing is a vital component and, the, and that upgrading that part can improve the sound quality and performance of the LP12. Now, this model has, the, has a second version of the bearing and it's an improvement on the original one. And the, in the early 1990s, Lynn released the circus bearing which is believed by many to be a significant upgrade. But as most things, Lynn, there are always debates on the effectiveness of each update. But I'm thinking, hey, maybe I should upgrade to the circus. And you may ask, well, why don't you just upgrade to the latest bearing, that, the one called the carousel? Well, to do that, I would have to upgrade too many of the other associated parts, which would cost thousands of dollars and is cost prohibitive to me. And the carousel parts alone are $900. So I go in on eBay and I find a circus bearing for sale at a pretty affordable price, I thought, and I, and I bought it. And here it is. This is the box that the Lynn Circus bearing came in. This is actually, I think, a, a carousel box. Um, the guy, the previous the seller, up, updated his his turntable to carousel and he used the box he reused it this is the actual bearing the circus bearing it's black precision metal I believe it has three bolts came this little bag here that hold it in into the uh, into the uh, chassis uh, this is the sub platter it's fairly heavy but it is and there's the actual tip, the spindle that goes down into the bearing. Actually has a little rubber cap that I took off earlier. Goes on like that. And then the outer platter sits on top. Um, he threw in a little bit, tiny bit of oil. I've got a couple bottles of this. Special black Lynn oil, very expensive. And he threw in some of these old springs for the, for the sprung chassis, I did read that the original bearing is a straight swap with the circus. Okay, but then after further reading, it would require me to pretty much dismantle much of its internal guts to do it and then reassemble it. And I'm confident that I could probably do it, but I started thinking it works and, and sounds just fine as it is, and why should I mess with it? I might mess up the suspension or something. And if you know anything about this turntable, Lynn does go on about their highly trained dealer network and how you should really only trust jobs like changing a bearing to an authorized dealer with a, an official LP12 jig and tools. But unfortunately, I'm a few hundred miles from one of those and I don't want to pack it up and ship it and then pay hundreds of dollars for the service because I'm kind of cheap. But I really think I should like leave it alone and enjoy it as it is and maybe avoid going down that LP12 OCD upgrade rabbit hole and money pit. But please feel free to try to persuade me to reconsider this and actually perform this circus upgrade. You know, I thought I was successful last night when I thought I pretty much finished all my shooting in one night. And then today I got home and I'm like, you know what? I think I have an, something else I can add to my turntable uh, collection. So, all right, this is the next day and I'm just gonna do one little short bit and uh, that'll be that. All right, now check out this monstrosity. This, is, this here black box is the TAC GF350 and it's, it's like an all-in-one music player it's got a radio it's got a cd player and inside come on there we go 
it's got a turntable and here's a some instructions quick start guide here's some looks like a couple extra styluses in here for the turntable uh, i don't know what that is a, maybe a pecking slip remote control and big old owner's manual and as a red-blooded male what do we do with the owner's manual throw it away all right now what makes this special is that it has a cd burner inside that you can actually record your vinyl records onto cd so i haven't i've had this for a few months it's been sitting in a spare room i haven't used it so today for this video i'm going to attempt to copy a record to a cd now i'm not going to put on one of my good records i don't trust this cheesy looking turntable stylus to my a, a good record but i'll find a find one that's kind of beat up and i don't mind if it gets i don't know something happens to it we'll see this is the record i'm going to try with this uh, turntable CD recorder. This is a copy of Boss Gag's Silk Degrees. It's kind of beat up. Um, these are a dime a dozen at the record shops. This guy sold millions of this of this album. All right, let's put this record on. Let's just see how it sounds as a record player. I'm gonna test it out. Oops. All right, it's on phono. I think it's a kind of like semi-automatic turntable. We're just going to place it down. It's got its own built-in speakers. Where's the volume? They all use the remote work. All right. Well, it sounds like crap, as I expected. It's got a there's a hum. It seems to be coming off of it. It's very cheesy tone arm, very thin, very flimsy looking. Um, does sound like crap, I'll be honest with you. Uh, what I, so what I'm gonna try to do now is burn a CD. I've never done this before, so I'm doing this live on camera. Maybe I should uh, move the camera a bit. Let's get the blank CD. And we're going to press the button here. How do I open it? Well, now I know why I got it for free. The CD doesn't open. I can't get it open. I don't feel like... I'd have to open this thing up and figure out what's going on with the with the drawer mechanism. So anyway, it's a piece of crap. As it is, it doesn't open. Oh well, <laughs> that's the end of the video, I guess. Thanks a lot.